join us in just a moment. Baylor, number one for the first time in program history. They're about to go down, though, for the first time this season, getting drubbed as we speak in Morgantown. So the team we are about to see tonight, most likely about to become number one. Fran, what else have we learned early on in this Big 12 season? It's the same old Kansas looking at their 13th potentially uh, Big 12 title. They're off to a terrific start. Haven't lost since the first game of the season to Indiana. West Virginia, we saw it tonight against Baylor. Incredible pressure. Turned Baylor over. Blew him out in Morgantown. But the Bears, terrific season so far despite tonight's loss. Started the year unranked and got to number one today. In just a moment, Baylor will fall to 15-1, and one, and West Virginia will improve to 14-2. and two. And Kansas will be the lone unbeaten team in the Big 12. Those three seem to clearly be the cream at the top of a conference, though, Fran, that maybe folks will realize as the season goes on it's deeper than they believe. We thought it would be a rebuilding year without Heald, Perry Ellis, George Niang. The middle of the conference is strong. But the top of the conference, led by Kansas, very strong. It is a rebuilding year, though, for Lon Kruger, as his team is 0-3 for only the second time in Big 12 play in his six years here in Norman. But they start off the game with a steal. And good news for Sooner fans. Jordan Woodard back in uniform tonight. He's missed his last four games. Unable to score the game's first points on the drive. Christian Doolittle, but tracks down the loose ball and a fresh 30 now for the Sooners. Darion Strong Moore, a junior, first year. After transferring from Coffeyville Community College to Norman, ends up getting the start, but we do expect that Jordan Woodard at some point is going to play. How much he will play, it's an undisclosed medical condition that has forced him out for the last four games. And he's a big part of this rebuilding Oklahoma program coming off that incredible Final Four run a year ago. Kansas, Bob, you and I have talked about it. They spread it out, four guards, and they use the floor spacing nicely. Another turnover, though. Back the other way comes Rashard Odoms. Kicks it to the corner. Cam McGusty. He can't score off the window, and we still have goose eggs on the board. Ron Kruger wanted a carry. Devontae Graham, short, long rebound, gets it back. Frank Mason, blocked out of bounds. Kadeem Lackin came over to support on the drive. It's hard to tell by the record, Bob, but this is a very talented young Oklahoma team. Some close losses, playing without their star, but it's a deep team, talent, just haven't been able to figure out how to put it together all at once. Nice touch pass, Landon Lucas to Josh Jackson. And the Jayhawks are on the board. We talked about small ball with Kansas, but Jackson is a hybrid, can play inside and out as a forward. On the drive, leaving it just on the front of the rim was Richard Odoms. Nice. Jackson, another high-low yep. pass. This time, Landon Lucas gets the finish. Josh Jackson came into this program, top five in the country. He doesn't score as much as some of the other top freshmen. But boy, does he do so many things well. Outstanding Bob offensively and defensively, but a much better passer than people realize. Great feel for the game. Averages over three assists per game to go along with 15 points and six and a half rebounds. So Bill Self was going on and on earlier today. That shoot around about the start that Josh Jackson is off to. Offensive foul. An illegal screen set by Kadeem Latin. Bill Self, he's won 12 straight Big 12 regular season titles, and a win tonight would put him to 400 in his Kansas career. He's already passed the 600 career win mark this season. Adding in his time at Tulsa and Illinois, Mason off the screen. 
Oklahoma opening up in a little matchup zone. A lot of switching out front. Odoms, nice drive, and finally the Sooners are on the board. Only a sophomore, Bob. He only scored 35 points all last season. He's more than tripled that already this year. He's a slasher. Landon Lucas missed everything. Big thing for Oklahoma, just cutting down on the silly mistakes. They've had a lot of bouts of inconsistent play. Tuesday presented by Century League continues here in Norman Oklahoma with a one-point lead over number two Kansas Bob was it alongside Fran Priscilla Holly Rowe is with us here as well this is a young talented Oklahoma team who has struggled early in Big 12 play but they get their star back tonight maybe not a lot of minutes but Jordan Woodard in uniform Bob We expect to see Jordan Woodard at some point tonight. Not sure when Lon Kruger feels he's going to be able to get him in the game. Kadeem Latin, the follow-up inside. Rolls a couple off the rim. Svi Mikhailuk comes away with the loose ball. Devontae Graham. Mason with an up fake. Off the window and good. I'll tell you, Frank Mason has the entire offensive package this year. Not only is he shooting it from deep, and scoring at the rim, but he's got as good a floater game as any guard in the country. Good example right there. Doolittle, a little too strong. Josh Jackson snatches it out of midair and sets up Frank Mason. Who makes it count? Bob, when he misses an open three, you're surprised. Think about this, over 50% from behind the arc this season. And we're already halfway through the year. And another great pass by Jackson. Richard Odoms, plus the foul. Chance for an old-fashioned three-point play for Richard Odoms when we come back to Norman. A good start between Kansas and Oklahoma. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by CenturyLink. Connecting more than just places. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And in part by... 17 points a game, good news for the Sooners to have him back, but even better to know that he's doing very well. Well, now it's time for getting more. Brought to you by Nature Made Gummies. As that three-point play is finished off by Richard Odoms. See Oklahoma in that 3-2 matchup zone. They'll do a lot of switching off. Just trying to get Kansas to be a little confused. So far they have been. And here's the getting more brought to you by Nature Made Gummies. And you can see the difference in production with and without Jordan Woodard. And for a young team, Fran, that has to be expected when you take your senior leader and the quarterback of your team, your point guard away. Without a doubt, Final Four experience, started over 100 games, and remember, 11 freshmen and sophomores on this Oklahoma roster coming off that great Final Four run. And I love their talent. They just haven't figured out how to piece together 40 minutes of basketball in a while. Shot clock down to one the buzzer but a little too strong on the jumper was Jordan Shepard well I remember calling Oklahoma games with you three or four years ago and you saying at the time you don't see it yet you've got Buddy Heal you got mm -hmm. Isaiah Cousins got Ryan Spangler it's coming for Lon Kruger and someday it will arrive do you feel that there is a foundation built where two or three years down the road for this OU team, you could see that same yes. kind of resurgence? Next year, next year. maybe That when, soon? Yes. Maybe we'll see some, you know, highlights this year. But I can remember there's a bunch of NBA scouts here tonight. I remember telling them 
When Buddy Hill was a freshman, I said, I don't know if this kid's going to make it in the NBA, but he's going to be a second-round pick at least. And obviously, the rest is history. He developed because of that great work ethic. This team has some talent and athleticism. And the perfect guy to build the program or rebuild it is Juan Kruber. Traveling called on Matt Freeman. You know, think about this, Bob. Juan Kruger is the only coach in NCAA history not only to take five different teams to the NCAA tournament, but also win games in five different, with five different teams. And he understands the process. How so? What makes Lon Kruger the architect of rebuild after okay. rebuild? A long-term contract, and I say that not half-jokingly, <laughs> but also because he's rebuilt so many times, and he's not in any danger of losing his job. And he's closer to the Hall of Fame than he is getting fired by Joe Castiglione. So while he's, an while he's a competitor, he's been through this before. Remember he told us today, I probably couldn't handle this as well when I was a young coach, but he's done it so many times, it's kind of like uh, riding a bicycle, if you will, rebuilding a program. And you're right, Joe Castiglione, who we just saw, understands the vision as well, and will, you think, allow Lon Kruger to do his work. Absolutely. Try to do work underneath Landon Lucas. Taken away, though, inside by Jamani McNeese. Jordan Shepard commits the foul at one end and has a shot blocked at the other. Devontae Graham finds the Gerald Vick, rolls it off the rim, numbers the other way for OU. Shepard with a ball fake. Can't finish with the left hand. Landon Lucas, home run pass for Graham. Oh, Squeezes man. it up and through. I'll tell you why. Great athleticism by Devontae Graham to catch it and then finish it with the left hand. Devontae Graham has turned it on from three the last couple of games as well. He is seven of his last 15 from behind the arc coming into tonight. Shot yeah. clock under 10 for Oklahoma. Yeah, what a backcourt Bill Self has this year. McGusty picks up his dribble. Tries to find McNeese. Knocked away. Here comes Graham. Back outside to Vic. Hits a triple. How about Vic? I think he was one for 12 to start the year. And he's he's a, he has been un, on fire from three since then. When we return, the bilingual Fran Fraschilla spends some time with Svi Mikhailov. We're going to test his vocabulary as well, see if he passes the test. Look who's on the floor. Jordan Woodard on the drive as his shot blocked, but welcome back to the lineup for the senior as he gets announced to the crowd. And Holly Rowe, this is a welcome back that the crowd is reacting to. That's right. He got a standing ovation from several of the students. But what was really special is when he took the seat in the huddle as the players are sitting around to indicate that he's checking in immediately. He was a voice in that huddle, talking to his teammates, encouraging them, telling them. As the players said today, Young Wood is back, and they love his leadership. Well, they need that leadership, Fran, don't uh, they? they? They sure do. He's been a winner his entire career. High school, college. Big part of that final four run. Devontae Graham from NBA range. Uh, we're going to have fun watching this Kansas team. Their backcourt. You talk about Mikhail Luke and Graham, Vic, Jackson, Mason. Bill Self said it's the easiest scoring team he's ever had at Kansas. And the numbers are indica indicate that. That'd be big. Woodard can't hit the three. Offensive rebound. Christian James. Plus the foul. Well, Jordan Woodard's missed four games, but uh, Christian James has been in witness protection also over the last couple. This is a young guy that uh, many thought would pick up where Buddy Heald left off. He was so good at the end of last season. And I really think, Bob, this is just my feeling that there's been a lot of pressure on James and Latin, two of the veterans from that Final Four run without Woodard, feeling like they had to do more. Now with Woodard back, once he gets established, I think they'll slide back into really nice complimentary roles. See all the switching out front in the zone. Jackson comes up short. Woodard runs it down. Doolittle shovels a pass through the hands of, of McNeese. Very 
Thursday night. It's another College Hoops doubleheader on ESPN at 7 Eastern. A trip to the ACC as Miami takes on number 20 Notre Dame, followed by the top two teams in the AAC. Cincinnati, winners of 10 in a row, will host SMU. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. And SMU's playing great basketball as well. Both of those teams, fun to watch. They play hard. SMU with a seven-man rotation. Former Jayhawk assistant Tim Jankovic doing a terrific job. Frank Mason, old school. Let me tell you, he's hit a three. He's hit two floaters already. I don't think people realize the skill level of Frank Mason because we've been watching him for four years and we've almost taken him for granted. James off the mark. Landon Lucas knocks it to the baseline. Scramble for it, and it's to Kansas. Well, you normally don't want to save that ball out on, under your opponent's basket. But good hustle right here. Watch Graham. He's just going to fling it. And I think what uh, fans are looking for was the, was the takedown. Imagine if Grayson Allen did that just now. Seriously. We would have a national controversy. Twitter might notice. We might have to get Trump involved. Okay. Make basketball fair again. We might make the Big 12 great again before yeah. too long. Oh, yeah. Landon Lucas seals inside and gets fouled as Woodard came to help. And this could have been called a foul. You know, take a look. Watch. Loose ball. And you know what? The end result to me, incidental contact. You don't think that's just two no, players fighting no, for the ball? I getting, do. I'm getting tied up. Absolutely do. Landon Lucas had double doubles in each of Kansas's first two Big 12 wins. And he has, in Big 12 play, averaged close to 12 rebounds a game. And Bill Self was telling us today, and I know he had a long conversation with Holly Rowe about this. Kansas has already started to shorten their practices because of the seven-man rotation. These guys are playing a lot of minutes in games. Soft touch, Rashard Odoms. Well, Frank Mason leads the Big 12 in minutes played. Devontae Graham's number two. So yeah. both of those players are well over 33 minutes per game. How often can you practice players that you know, and as even Bill Silf said, they'll probably have to play as the season moves on 35 or more minutes again. I, I always felt as a coach that on February 1st, you needed to start to think about fresh legs and shorten your practices. And some years, when you have the lack of depth, I think you got to start it a little sooner. And Bill Self's been doing this for so long. I think he gets it. Tie up, keeps it with Kansas. And Holly, more on how Bill Self is dealing with this shortened bench. That's right. Because of their depth issues, he is being a little bit easier. Every every week after games, they have a day off. He said, I'm trying to give the guys two full days off a week. And our practices are shorter than they've ever been while I've been coaching here at Kansas. He wants his players fresh. But I did talk to Frank Mason about it. He's averaging 34.8 minutes per game. He's like, Holly, I wish I was playing 40. I want to play every <laughs> single second I can be out there. I'm ready to go. He plays like it. He sure does. Jackson leans in off the mark. Arian Strong Moore up the court feeds Cam Augusti. Yeah, the freshman from Katy, Texas, knocks down a three. And the same prep school that Buddy Heald attended, Sunrise Christian. Top 50 player, hurt early, starting to find his groove. It will stay with Kansas when we return, but Oklahoma hanging in there at home. Down by four against number two. Goodness Knows invited people who've always wanted to create a dream. Virginia in Morgantown, turn it over 30 times yep. and get blown out in the second half. And I, you know, I love those Mountaineer fans, but I heard there was a court storming. There was a court storming. Come on now. You knew you were, you knew you were going to play well tonight, Mountaineer fans. So you think beating number one invalidates the court storming? I don't know. You know, I don't care either way, but I just don't, <laughs> I never want anybody to get hurt. And I'll tell you what, I've been a part of some court stormings there. 
And they are very polite there, I will say that. Terrific fans down there, and we watched a lot of the game. And dominated from start to finish. I don't have a problem with court stormings, especially when they're really careful like they are in Morgantown. We're going to be down there next week with the Sooners. Christian Doolittle drew the foul from Landon Lucas. Another one of those freshmen. He's a young man that played at Memorial High School. Probably its most famous alumnus is coaching the other team right now. Bill Self, and of course, Doolittle helped Jordan Woodard win one of those 6A Oklahoma State titles. Comes from an athletic family. His older brother Cameron is a wide receiver at Oklahoma State. 7-0. Sooners run, cuts the lead to two. Jackson rolls one off the rim, the back tap to Frank Mason. Flop, not be bought, something. and yep. knocking it down is Josh Jackson. Off the feed from Frank Mason. Wait, the way I understand the, the rules now in a situation like that, it's gotta be a block or a charge. Too much contact in my opinion. I'll tell you what, as good as Jackson has came in with the reputation, I, I think he's better than people even realize because he does so many things. Nice drive by Cam Augusti. Like what? What are the elements of Frank Mason's game that no, no, no. have Jack caught your eye? Jackson? Or Jackson, yeah. pardon me, that have caught your eye that people might not realize. Tremendous passer. Uh, look at that. The energy levels through the roof. He was the most competitive of the top recruits a year ago. Augusti put one up that looked like my shot. And Jamie Lucky ends up on top of the photographers along the baseline. And now the ball will end up with Kansas. Good hustle on the air ball. Watch Svee. Throws it off. Last to hit it is Odoms. Jamie Lucky couldn't see it, and he got some help from his partners. Now, we watched Kansas work against this matchup zone today. You need ball movement, cutting, a little bit of screening. But Oklahoma just keeps switching off and just guarding the man that's in their area. And there's an illegal screen. Mitch Lightfoot called for the foul. That will bring Dwight Colby in the game. As already a couple of fouls called on Car Carlton Bragg here in the first half. Landon Lucas picked one up as well. And without Yudoka Azabuki, it's a thin front court for Bill Self. He has to go down the bench and give Lightfoot and Colby some minutes. Colby's only played one minute in the last four. Of course, he's a transfer from Ole Miss coming off ACL surgery a year ago. Back to the line goes Christian Doolittle. And there is Azabuki who has torn ligaments that were operated on in his left wrist back on the 4th of January. And Holly, this is a freshman that was supposed to make a big impact this season that Bill Self really misses. You're right, and you know, he was really starting to come on strong. He's got that big frame, and Bill Self is just yelling at his team in the huddle that they don't have a post presence. They really do miss this young man. I was able to talk to him before the game. The surgery went great. He said in about two weeks, he can't, he's not allowed to sweat right now, which I understand. You don't want to get anything in that cut, that surgically repaired wrist there, but he said that he's going to start doing some stuff to stay in shape while he can't play. He should be back in about five months. And the unfortunate thing, Holly, was that he's only 17 years old. So he is actually, he had to stay for two seasons. He could not be a one and done guy. And so Bill Self was excited that he was going to have him for two full years. And as it turns out, at the moment, he's going to have him for a part of this year. And then hopefully all of next year before we see where his future goes as an NBA prospect. Oklahoma continues the run. They've got the game tied. Mason, a little too strong on the drop. Jordan Woodard the other way. Doolittle attacks, can't score it. Foul call. Jamani McNeese on the weak side, got in, got the offensive rebound, fouled by Devontae Graham, and it will be a one and one for McNeese. That's team foul number eight on Kansas here in the first half. You know, when you're watching Oklahoma these first 15 minutes, 
with Jordan Woodard back, it's like a it's like a baby with a security blanket, you know? You look around with the two freshmen and two sophomores right now, and it's got to be a good feeling knowing that their all-conference guard is back in the lineup, even if he's not at 100% tonight. Just the presence out there has got to be calming for them. Kylo blocked on the way in. McNeese protects the rim. Spin move. Flipping it up off the window, but off the mark, McGusty. Saved. Right to Devontae Graham. Here comes Mason. Numbers. The ball fake. And a finish by Frank Mason. That's strong right there. He's 5'11", but he's so strong. So good at going to the rim. He's shooting over 60% on rim shots. Those balls that are just taken at the rim, and he doesn't have the length. Three from the corner off the mark from Augusti. Frank Mason has led Kansas season. Number one in the Big 12, just a shade under 20 points a game. I think he's one of the three best players in the country right now. Who else is on that level? Uh, to me, it's, it's Josh Hart from Villanova, Monzo Ball because of what he's done at UCLA, and Frank Mason. To me, those would be my three National Player of the Year candidates today. Josh Hart, big win tonight. Villanova spanked Xavier. But this kid, Frank Mason, we've watched him, Bob, over four years. And, you know, last year, there was some play, but there were some analysts that thought he was only one of the only one of the five best guards in the league. Those guys have been proven wrong. He's sitting by you tonight. <laughs> Jump hook for McNeese. Goes down. I'll tell you, Jamuddy McNeese now. Remember, 6'10 sophomore really come along with that offensive game. Lucas with deep post position. And it looks like he has drawn the foul. Oklahoma fighting their way back to tie it with under four to go here in the first half. A good one in Norman. ESPN's exclusive. Much hey. Seth Greenberg agrees with you. He wants to invalidate the court storming tonight no. in Morgantown. Seth and I have been in the Coliseum in the last couple of years. And I would say that uh, now we're right by the you and I are going to be by the students. Yes. When there is a court storming. But I'm going to tell you, if you tell them beforehand, guys, you guys go left, you guys go right. Just go. don't step on the announcers. They're great about it. I can't wait to see you, Mountaineer Maniacs, next Wednesday. Fran, do you forget the year they tipped over the table and the play people were cut up behind you? It got pretty hectic. Holly, I don't recall that. <laughs> <laughs> I love those Mountaineer Maniacs, Holly. I think this is preventative um, twitching. Uh, I like it. Yeah, this is proactive. He's trying to put... <laughs> Rush some, responsibly. That's my yes. theme for Big 12 teams. Rush go. responsibly. Put some positive vibes out there so they don't hurt us. Cranking it home. Rashard Odoms. Look who's got the lead with 3.23 to go in the first half. Well, Jordan Woodard has transformed this young team and given him a boost of confidence. You know what, Frank Mason hasn't gotten going yet. Not like he can. Sets up Graham. Off the mark. Woodard floats one. McNeese not in position and swats it right to Mikhailu. Off to Mason. Lost his balance. Draws the foul. That's only team foul number five on OU here in the first half. And that one will go against Odoms. That's his first. That'll bring Kadeem Latin back in the game. He will replace Jamani McNeese. You know, we've been, we've been talking about Mason and Woodard, and how about the next couple games we have? We're going to see Jawan Evans in Oklahoma State in Allen Fieldhouse on Saturday. The last team in the Big 12, I believe, to beat Kansas in there, Oklahoma State. And then Monday, we're going to see one of the great point guards in the country, Monte Morris. How far back in Big 12 history do you have to go to find a year where there were this many really top-notch point guards in the league? And, you know, it's tough to say. I remember, and I wasn't covering the league. I might have even been coaching then. 
you know, when Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas were really good, you know, T.J. Ford and then Heinrich and Aaron Miles, guys like that. Yep. Hollis Price, that great backcourt, uh, Juanis White that Kelvin Sampson had here. This is as good as it's oh, been in a long way, time, though. And Stinson and Blaylock, right. Iowa State, Tinsley. A tip follow won't go. Score the basket. Kadeem Latin kept it alive, and they will call basket interference on Kansas. Jamie Lucky is trying to get the message across to Bill Self, who's being calmed down by John Higgins, that this was goaltending. Let's take a look right here. I thought the Vic hit the ball, no? I guess they're saying it was over the cylinder when he hit it. Vic hits the ball. You see the hand right in the middle? So score the bucket for Oklahoma, and they're up by four. Mason, in and out on the floater. Tell you, Oklahoma is dominating the offensive glass. They're getting almost 50% of their misses back, Bob. National average is about 30%, so they're, they're doing a really good job on the glass. Jordan Woodard, blocked by Lucas, but a foul call. Well, the matchup zone has kept Kansas from getting into the lane off of penetration, and then they've done a really nice job on the offensive glass tonight, and that's given them an opportunity to extend this lead. Devontae Graham called for his second foul, and Jamie Lucky exchanges pleasantries with Bill Self. Talking to Kadeem Latin earlier today, briefly at shoot around. You want to talk about an interesting guy? This is an interesting guy. One of two players selected to the NCAA's men's basketball oversight committee. He wants to be the mayor of Houston someday. That's his ultimate career goal. And he can do it. Yeah, great personality. Terrific bloodlines. Mom was an outstanding player. But Gerald Vick forces one up. I'll tell you, Bob, this is not a big surprise with Woodard back because this Oklahoma team has good young talent. About a week ago, I said it was like a good JV team playing against a varsity team without Woodard. It wasn't meant as a slap, but they're just young. down a triple and a good look from cross the court by Jordan Woodard and again not giving him a lot of points but he looks like he's in pretty good shape for one practice he's like that old man at the wide it just stays on the court five or six trips Landon Lucas nice. banks at home even after Buford got a piece you watch them practice every day when we come out before a game. Norm Roberts, the assistant coach, always working on those baby hooks with his big guys. Woodard, the up fake. And finish it for Paris with the follow. And that's what Kadeem Lawton, that's where he's at his best. I think sometimes he worried without Woodard about scoring too much. But he's an energy big, and he's playing like it tonight. Kansas led 21 to 12 since then. Oklahoma on a 24 to 6 run. Falco. That's a reach in given by Jordan Shepard. Oklahoma still had a foul to give. That was team foul number six. This is always a good spot for Kansas for a little flare screen for Graham into the half. Mason tries to drive it, stripped away. Two seconds to go in the half, and it stays with the Jayhawks. Now you got to think lob here if you're Oklahoma. They have time for a catch and shoot, but think lob. It's into Vic, fades away. In and out. A nine-point lead at the break for these young Sooners. 
as they trail by nine at 21 to 12. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Coach, what is the emotional and mental impact of having Jordan Woodard back on your youngsters out there? Well, everyone's very happy for Jordan. To have him healthy enough to play is fantastic, and he's given us a nice lift, and other guys are working hard, too. Some of your guys have kind of come alive with his leadership out there, especially Kadeem. What are you seeing? Well, I see a lot of energy, I see a lot of emotion. We got, we've been doing a better job with that. Uh, guys are coming along a little bit, got a long way to go, but uh, a good first half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, Holly, thanks very much. And now number two in America on the road as well. Not faring well. Tough league. We talked about that in the open. And Fran, we also talked about the return of Jordan Woodard. He only played nine minutes of the first half and didn't score. But OU looked like a different team when he was on the floor. He was their security blanket, and he provided energy. And the energy came particularly with the big guys. They dominated the offensive glass in the first half, 11 of them. Take a look, getting those tip-ins, scoring around the basket. Really, really good effort by Oklahoma's big guys. And uh, it is a concern if you're Bill Self. Really good. Kadeem Latin making it happen for Juan Cougar. Holly Rowe, 11 offensive rebounds for OU in the first half, and we'll see if they can pull off the upset. Well, I asked Bill Self, how do you improve your offensive rebounding in this second half? And he said, Holly, it's not that we're not offensive rebounding. We're not rebounding at all. He said, our guys just aren't very competitive out there tonight, and they have to be. He said, when you're playing small ball like this, we need our wings to be more competitive, get to the basket. He said, pretty much, we just need to do everything better. Key right now for Oklahoma is without Woodard, take care of the ball and get quality shots. Remember, they got off to a slow start to this game without him. Across the lane, a little too strong. Doolittle gets his own miss, blocked at the rim. Landon Lucas ends up outletting to Josh Jackson. Jackson will attack. Makai Luke the trail. Hits a three. Good start to the second half for the Jayhawks. And a good start from Makai Luke who uh, did not make a basket in that first half. That time he shot that ball with a lot of confidence. Right down the lane, and Magusti off the mark, and then commits a foul. Really good no call on that drive because Jackson with that six foot eight frame and the athleticism, straight up, kept his verticality. Official had nothing. First foul on Magusti. Oklahoma staying in that what's a hybrid man zone. They switch a lot out of it. You see they're pointing and talking. Jackson left alone for three. Teams will bait Jackson into shooting that ball. He's below 30% on the season. Odoms leans in on Mikhailu and misses badly. Devontae Graham, two on one, lobs it to Frank Mason. Perfect start for Kansas, out of the gates quickly. And remember what we mentioned, oh, Jordan Woodard was the catalyst for the comeback, and he's not gonna start the second half. I wonder how early we see him, Bob. How early would you put him in? Next three, four minutes. Can't let, let this game get away after playing so well. Shot clock down to seven. Very on Strong Moore, straight away three. Tough shot. Kylo clears the rebound. Jackson from the corner. How about the run, or rather Graham from the corner. The run for Kansas to start off the second half. They've cut the lead to one. Well, it's not a surprise, because you know Bill Self was peeling the paint off the wall in the locker room. And on the other hand, you got to get Jordan Wood back, Woodard back in there sooner than later. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. Turn down! NBA Saturday primetime. Set the trap. Bob Lashusen alongside Fran Frischilla, Holly Rowe here as well in Norman. And Fran, I think Lon Kruger heard you. An 8-0 KU run, cuts the lead down. And now Frank Mason off the steal, gives Kansas 
the outright lead. It's a 10-0 run to start off the second half, just as Jordan Woodard checks back in. And a great response by Kansas. Number two in the country. They played poorly in the first half. Maybe, arguably, their worst half of the year. And they responded to start the second half. Mason, short. Doolittle, in and out. Graham tries to save it and does to McKyler. And just right now, 10 points from the guards. McKyler, Mason, Graham, good start for them. Lucas held inside. Watch Mason now off the little inbounds. And one of those turnovers that you just can't afford to have if you're Christian Doolittle, the freshman. Another jumper goes. McKinley knocks it down. And Kansas continues their run to open up the second half. In any language, Bob, that is a sweet stroke. As you would know. Woodard off to Latin. Yes. The first points of the second half for Oklahoma. Makes it a two-point game. Graham, quick trigger. Rolls around off the rim. Makai Luke, an offensive rebound. Does it again. That gets rejected by Latin. Woodard crosses over. He'll go to the line. Fouled by Frank Mason. Just in that little segment right there. You saw the energy of those big guys. That's Latin at his best. And then Woodard starts to break, and he's going to get to the line. Good interior defense by Kadeem Latin, the junior from Houston. Started every game a year ago on that terrific Oklahoma team that went to the Final Four. Well, last season, Latin led the Big 12 in block shots. He's third so far this year. And he will now go to the bench, replaced by the sophomore, Jamani McNeese. And, Bob, just to put in perspective how good Jordan Woodard has played this year, he had 28 against Memphis in a close loss and 28 against a very good Wichita team. So this is, uh, this is a guy that is considered one of the best guards in this league. Well, by playing tonight, he'll be back up to 75% of his team's games, which means he will register again among the Big 12 leaders in the statistics, and it'll put him third in scoring and third and free throw shooting as the possession kept alive off the Makai Luke miss Mason drives and scores again boy how well he plays through contact exactly at under six feet exactly and that's not a sometimes thing I'm telling you he really does a great job using that body at the rim McNeese with the left hand taken away by Landon Lucas those are the shots you cannot afford to miss if you're going to upset Kansas Good cut. Jackson off the feed from Devontae Graham. What happened was the freshman Doolittle turned his head, and those are the kind of mistakes you cannot make when you have this kind of young team. Jump hook. McNeese knocks it down. I'm telling you, that is a money move for Jamani. Both hands. Much improved. Mason straight away three. Got it again. I'm telling you, he only had nine at the half. He's going to end up in the 20s. Woodard. Hits a three. Frank Mason rang his face. And Mason rolled his eyes. Couldn't believe Woodard knocked that one down. Hey, they've been going at each other for four years. Fearlessly. Makai Luke turns it over. No, recovered by Graham. A steal thrown right back to Mason. No reason to throw that ball. It's a three. No reason for James to throw that ball. And Frank Mason, he is going to make you pay. He's, if he doesn't get hurt, he's a lock. First team all there. Woodard can't answer. Offensive rebound, Doolittle. Stepped on the end block. Kansas ball when we return. 
Well, Fran, you said Frank Mason would get over 20. He's already got 21. Hey, he's gone 30 a couple times this year, I believe. Was in a row, but look at him over these hurdles in the weight room. Yeah, that was three hurdles he bounced past. And the one-legged high jumps, look at this one. Okay, that's a lot of bounce for a little guy, Fran. Uh, a lot more than I have, Holly. I know that. And he's pound for pound the strongest player on the team, according to their strength coach. Well, that and would that would be true of our uh, broadcast crew when it comes to me. Yes, this is the vertically challenged <laughs> broadcast crew at ESPN. Is it looks like a foul will be called on the floor by Jerry Pollard. The problem with our broadcast crew is uh, we put on the pounds during the course of the season, but there's the quick start we talked about. Not sure why you were looking at me when you said that as Jordan <laughs> Shepard picks up his third. Jackson for three. Comes up short. Racing the other way, Christian James. Good catch by McGusty. We've got three freshmen on the floor right now, a couple sophomores. Big stretch for Alon Kruger. Under 10, McNeese, jump hook. Goes it it is automatic. This is a young man that played very little high school basketball at Allen High in Dallas. Red shirt, sophomore, third year in the program. Best basketball ahead. Talking about 6'10 and an athlete. Mikhailuk. It's a triple. A whistle underneath. That is a beautiful stroke. Christian James called for the foul. Makai Luke's three is good. So and get... Kansas keeps the ball. Exactly. So the basket counts. They'll get possession. Makai Luke in his first four starts, averaging over 12. Adding to that tonight. He's at the stage now where when he's open and he misses a shot, it's a shot. Mason fouled on the drive. That one goes against Christian James. That's his second. Oklahoma already with five fouls in the first seven and a half minutes. Kansas with one foul so far in the second half. Now, if there is an Achilles heel as a team for Kansas, they are a poor free throw shooting team outside of Frank Mason. Yeah, you know what, Bob? But in Big 12 play, they have really picked it up. Mason off the mark. The back tap keeps it alive again. Mason for three. It's a six-point trip for I'm Kansas. You, I'm telling you, that's a guy shooting 50% behind the arc. And great ball movement by Devontae Graham. Interesting to see now, Fran, how Oklahoma responds after that last trip, because that was a gut punch. To give up a three, a foul, a couple of offensive rebounds, extended possession, and another three. Well, they've got to tighten up their defense, and they can't let this guy shoot it. Makai Luke misses. Here comes McGusty. on the handoff, Jordan Shepard. He was looking for a foul call, doesn't get it. Kansas with a response here in the second half. These two could be a problem. They're going down. State Farm knows that for every one of those moments, there's one of these. These two could be a problem. They're going down. It's also a ranked team, and they were at home, so not a huge upset, Fran, that they would beat Duke. But having said that, it's been a roller coaster at the top of the pole for some of the Blue Bloods this year. Conference play. Conference play, Bob. The familiarity, you're back in your own neighborhood, there's no fear factor. Louisville's gonna host Pitt tomorrow. They'll have a chance to be 14 and three when Duke comes rolling in there on Saturday. Odoms, defended at the rim, held ball, and it will go over to Kansas. Tomorrow night, catch an NBA Wednesday doubleheader on ESPN at 8 Eastern. Russell Westbrook and the Thunder host the Grizzlies. 
followed by LeBron and the Cavs in Portland to take on the Blazers. Coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN. Streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN as well. And how about the current NBA Rookies of the Month? In the East, former Kansas star Joel Embiid. And in the West, former Sooner star Buddy Heald, who's really started to pick up his game in his rookie year. Three seconds called on Kansas. Holly? I was able to check in with Buddy Hill today, who is in New York City for a couple of back-to-back -back games with the Knicks and then the Nets in a couple of days. He said he will definitely be watching the game tonight. He said, I wish I could be there to talk to my young team and give them some motivation. They need a little help right now. They need that veteran experience. They, they also need that work ethic. That was what you were talking about yeah. with Buddy Heald earlier today, that when you saw him as a freshman, what gave you such confidence to say down the road, this is going to be a special player, as you could see early on how hard he worked at his game. Without a question, he got better every year, and he, he dragged his teammates with him. Isaiah Cousins, Ryan Spangler, certainly Jordan Woodard. I have never seen a player in college in all my 30 years that had the work ethic that Buddy Neal had. We would come to the day, game day shoot around of a Kansas or an Oklahoma State at what, noon? And Buddy Heald would be in the gym getting shots up. And he did graduate. Got his degree. Had a wonderful year, lottery pick. What an unbelievable career. Unheralded coming in, Bob, to uh, just an amazing run. I talked to Joe Castiglione next to Adams, Tisdale, and Griffin. There'll be a banner with Buddy Heald's name up there. There's no doubt about that. Deserved. By the way, how about Joel and B, who wants to be a seven foot two NBA point guard? <laughs> and what a season he's having as the process continues in Philadelphia. Don't you wish us Nick fans had a process? We've been wishing that since 1974. Ten minutes to go. And the, first, the second half, Lucas with position underneath, and McNeese is called for the foul. That's his second. Landon Lucas probably can't jump over the Kansas City Sunday star, but he is unbelievable at getting position and understanding the angle with which to have his teammates feed him. Mason in the corner, off the feed from Josh Jackson. Listen, Josh Hart, Lonzo Ball, Mason. This kid is, he is a serious, you know, last year, Denzel Valentine got out of the gate quick, got hurt, and Buddy Heald took over from there and they went back and forth. Frank Mason is in the National Player of the Year picture. 27 points tonight, five of six from three. Already shooting 52% from three coming into tonight, number one in the Big 12. And he just raises his percentage from three, game in, game out. And what you love about him and Josh Hart, similar to Valentine and Heald a year ago, four-year guys who helped their teams win. Landon Lucas, a little too strong. Big stretch for the Sooners, only down eight. Need to get the confidence back. James comes up short. Now they were down nine in the first half, 21 to 12, and that's when they went on their big run. Now they're down eight, see if they have a run in them in the last nine minutes. There's that four guard offense. Spread it out, look to drive. Jackson spins, he'll go to the line. That's another foul on McNeese. That's his third. McNeese has got to learn to play vertically because Jackson was going to shoot a challenge shot until McNeese's hands came down on the shooter. Now coming up, I'd like to take a look at something that you were pointing out to all of us earlier today. We've got something worked up on it. This four-out, one-in offense that not just Kansas, but so many teams now in college basketball are running, why they do it and why it's effective. You know, in all honesty, the four-out offense has been run for forever. You know, a lot of times, especially at the mid-major level, Division II, three, high school, you play your best players, and you can't recruit big guys all the time. 
And this is a year with Kansas, who's been so fortunate through the years with great big men that their best five scorers are perimeter players. And Bill Self has adjusted like anybody who's been nominated to the Basketball Hall of Fame would. James straight away. That's a big shot for Christian James. They watch. Sooners are in it. But they need a few stops. You'll see, Bob, how the floor is spread. Take a look. This is what we mean by four out one in. This play is going to start off as a normal Kansas pick and roll offense. But look how the floor is spread now for those guards. Lucas is going to screen and roll, suck the defense in. Vic is going to knock it down. When they close out on Vic or a shooter, what does Kansas do? They drive it like that. Josh Jackson fouled by Kadeem Latin. Oh, check that Buford. That's his first. And Buford was slow to get up. Yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not seeing the reinvention of the wheel here. This is a common way to play that you can't recruit the kind of big guys that uh, Kansas or the Blue Bloods get. I think it was last year, Bob, Kansas only ran that spread offense like four possessions of an entire season. Nine for Josh Jackson. James stumbled. That goes off the fingertips of Jordan Woodard. Kansas basketball, when we come back, they've got an eight-point lead trying to win on the road here in Norman. Thank you very much, Bob Schusen, Fran Priscilla, Holly Rowe here in Norman as Kansas, at least to this point now, the lone unbeaten team in Big 12 play as West Virginia took down number one Baylor. So Bill Self's team trying to get to number one, but it's a long road now to number one for Duke. You were... I think eyebrows raised when you saw how um, lopsided that score was yeah. in the end at Florida State. Well, Florida State's playing great. A lot of athletes. Lob. And yep. finished by yep. Jackson. That's one of those specials out of the timeout. When we watch Kansas practice, Bob, very few teams spend more time at the special teams of basketball, if you will, than Bill Self's team. Woodard, too strong. James recovers. Touch pass to Magusti. Makai Luke able to secure the rebound. You know, basketball is funny because can Oklahoma's had much that speed. The oh, yeah. follow by Landon yeah. Luke gets off the Mason miss. Oklahoma's had about three or four baskets in the second half that have gone in and out. Might have changed the complexion, but it doesn't take away from the kind of the energy that Kansas has played with. This play was set up by Mason Speed. He's, there's the lob right there. That comes out of the timeout. And of course, nobody better to run it with on this team than Josh Jackson. But you love being able to trick the other team out of a timeout. You scout, you watch film, and then you plant the surprise on them. Just lead for KU. Graham extends the lead with a three. Last year, at the end of the year, we were talking about Devontae Graham more so than Mason. And together, they're an egoless backcourt. Woodard fouled on the drive as Kansas has now hit 12 threes as a team. Crazy, Bob, because the first five games of the season, Kansas went 30 for 100 from behind the arc. And since then, it's been unbelievable. Chance for a three-point play for Christian Doolittle. Jackson called for the foul. That's his third. 
This, this young man's going to be a very good player. He can play with strength in the in the lane. He can make shots from the perimeter. Christian Doolittle just getting his feet wet in the Big 12. Doolittle for one season was a high school teammate of Jordan Woodard. And Edmund Memorial, they won a state title together when Doolittle was a freshman and Woodard was a senior in high school. Last time high school teammates started for Oklahoma, the Griffin brothers back in 2008, 2009. Augusti with a run out. And that's blocked by McCann Luke, score the bucket. Well, good hustle by Vic, but the Augusti got that ball up on the rim. Another of those freshmen that's been playing better as of late out of Houston. And again, a lot of building blocks here for Lon Kruger. Kansas has turned it up in the second half, but we've seen some uh, glimpses of excellent play. Terrific shot by Josh Jackson. A little stutter step, hesitation dribble. Got him to the goal. And you couldn't do that with a conventional two big man lineup. Throwing it down the drive though, Rashard Odoms. Oklahoma, this is it for them, Bob. Five minutes, down 10. They had that great run at the end of the first half. Woodard called on a reach in. He thought he had a clean strip of the Gerald Vick. And watch this drive by Jackson. Uses the window, kisses it. And then Rashard Odoms, we said, power wing, kind of a hybrid forward. Right down I-35 from Dallas, Copper's Cove, south of Waco. Nine team fouls on Oklahoma, so it's the double bonus the rest of the way as Vic knocks down the front end of the last one and one for KU. Let me tell you something. Kansas still has one foul to give, by yeah. the way. They've only got five up there. There's a great recruiting battle going on right now for Trey Young, who plays right here in Norman. Top 15 players in the country. Woodard hits a jumper. And it's Kansas and Oklahoma, in my opinion, as the two leaders. If he goes to Kansas, he replaces Frank Mason. If he goes to Oklahoma, he replaces Jordan Woodard on this young team. Very interesting battle shaping up. So Gerald Vick comes up short. Too little, too strong. Kadeem Latin can't follow. And Frank Mason finds the rebound amidst the two big men for OU. And those are the kind of misses that Oklahoma has had in the second half. Might have a problem with the shot clock. And it looks like for some reason the shot clock got to 12 and just froze right there for a few seconds. So right now we've got Jamie Lucky and John Higgins over at the monitor. Probably not going to take more than a second or two off the timer. It freezes at 12. And you'll see stops right there, as does the game clock. We have a function. Thursday night, catch another Hoops doubleheader on ESPN, 7 Eastern. Head to the ACC. Miami takes on number 20, Notre Dame. Followed by the top two teams in the AAC. Cincinnati, they've won 10 in a row. They'll host SMU. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. And they haven't fixed it yet. Well, they took one second, one second off the yeah. game clock, but left the shot clock at 12. Now they take the shot clock all the way down to eight seconds. That seems like a couple seconds too many. That doesn't match up with where the game clock was. Well, they have a digital stopwatch that they use to be as precise as they possibly can. And now they've got the game clock down by four seconds as well. So eight seconds to shoot for Kansas. Here goes Frank. Instead, it's Jackson. 
He'll drive it. Can't throw it down. Big possession. Get it under 10. Down to eight or seven, maybe. In the corner, a wide open three is way short from Doolittle. Loose ball. A foul is called. And it looks like that will go against Kadeem Latin. You know, for a high school All-American, Josh Jackson gets on the floor after loose balls a lot. You know, Markel Fultz from Washington having a fabulous year. Lonzo Ball, the terrific guards at Kentucky. They, they may be flashier, but this guy does so many things to help you win. Holly? Well, Fran, he's a, one of the biggest competitors on the team. The uh, performance coach, Andrea Hoodoo, is telling me that he has completely transformed their personality in the weight room, that he is a beast and has made everybody around him more competitive. And you think about that. He comes in as a 19-year-old to this Kansas team that's been established, and he's the one that's bringing a lot of that competitive fire and energy to this Kansas team this year. And uh, it doesn't look like he's got the frame that would be a beast in the weight room, but he does have that work ethic. Oh, he does. And uh, I'll tell you, being around him during his high school career, he's as competitive a guy coming into this college freshman class as any of those guys. He's got that KG mentality. Augusti blocked on the drive. Landon Lucas rejected the shot, but a foul call. And they're going to call Lucas for the foul. That's his third. Spin move by McGusty. Wow. Yeah. That's a tough call. Wasn't on the way down. Wasn't goaltending. You see any contact? Like, they called it with the body just a bit. It was the contact after he had blocked the shot. But to me, he's going straight up to try and reject the shot. I have a hard time believing that well, by, Lucas is going to be able to avoid that contact yeah. and have any chance to play the ball. By rule, when the shooter, when it leaves his hand, he's still in the act of shooting until both feet hit the floor. So. But also by rule, if that player that's blocking the shot goes straight up, right. he has the right to that position. Uh, he does. Yep. They saw it a little differently than we did. Well, Augusti makes it a 10-point game with under four to go. Does Oklahoma have a push in them in the last three minutes and Absolutely. 50 seconds? Absolutely. Absolutely. Not if Lucas catches it there. Two free throws for Landon Lucas when we come back. KU trailed by nine, Fran, at the break, but they have had a response literally from the moment the second half started. It's called championship DNA, Bob, and it's Big 12 time as well. Think to the rim, he's playing defense, setting up his teammates, on his way to an All-American season and it's been a four-year journey for him at in Lawrence and although a different number of years played for Kansas it's got to feel pretty good for any basketball player when they pass Wilt Chamberlain on any statistical list absolutely and Frank Mason has moved past Wilt on Kansas's all-time scoring list in this game Wilt to still or Dippy as they called him when he played for KU I'm reading a bio of Fog Allen right now, which is why I know that. That time, McNeese was not automatic. A wild left-handed flip. Now we talked to Bill Self today about the comparison between... Jackson comes up short on the lob as McNeese undercut him, and it looks like McNeese has fouled out. Frank Mason, how about this comparison? Sharon Collins might be Bill Self's best point guard in his 14 years. He pretty much told us that today. But he also left the door slightly ajar for Frank Mason. He said Sharon Collins was the best leader that he's coached at Kansas. Frank is a little quieter. But offensively, he thought that they were he was in the same ballpark. Keep in mind, Sharon Collins, two-time All-American. Well, you said you thought that Frank Mason right now ought to be in anyone's discussion on the short list for Player of the Year. Player of the Year. I Absolutely. mean, he should, he should be right there in the Wooden Award discussion. Absolutely. My three are Ball and Hart, Mason. And, you know, you got, you know, a Luke Kennard, 
Ethan Hack from Wisconsin, Swanigan, but the top three to me are fairly well ensconced at the moment. off the mark. Rebound to Richard Odoms. 12-point Kansas lead, two and a half minutes to go. Odoms has it rejected by Jackson, but it's goaltending. It was on the way down, so now the lead is back down to 10. On the way down, but maybe not on the way to the rim. Which it is... certainly looked like it was going to come up short. Yeah, I was surprised by that. We got ball. That. If, it, if it was going to hit the rim, it's goaltending, so that's, that's a good call by Jamie Lucky. It was definitely not going in. The fact that it had a chance to hit the rim is an easy call. We're so we're so good at officiating when we get to see the replays, you know? Two of us. We get to watch them two or three times sometimes. <laughs> it's like Svee's travel last week, right? Shot clock down to five. Graham lobs it. Just missing. One-handed attempt, Josh Jackson. Odoms able to finish. Timeout called by Lon Kruger. Is it back down to single digits? Under two minutes to go. So an Oklahoma team that has showed its youth. Obviously, they get Jordan Woodard back, and that has made a difference in their composure when they've had him on the floor. And the fact, Fran, that at some point in the second half, the way that Kansas has played, you could see a young team get demoralized and maybe roll over a bit, but Oklahoma keeps on trying to hang in the game, although Kansas tonight's just been too good. Well, I think when you watch the tape from Oklahoma's standpoint, first three minutes of the second half is what did them in. Played terrific at the end of the, end of the first half. Give Kansas credit. They came out flying like they were shot out of a cannon, and you expect that from a veteran team. But I said at the beginning, I'll say it again, a lot of young talent on this Oklahoma team. Haven't been able to put 40 minutes together in quite some time, but there's flashes here of very good play. And with Woodard back, Bob, don't you think they're going to be dangerous? Especially at home? Luke will drive it. Look at that. Mason the extra pass to Jackson. The long rebound ends up with Odoms. No margin for error now for Oklahoma. They have to score every trip down. I'd start by getting the ball back to Woodard as quickly as I could. I can't take their time either. No. Got to go. 1.15 to go. Woodard to the corner. Doolittle can't hit the three, and Mikhail Luke. Ends up with the rebound. That three would have made it interesting. Oh, yeah, and it's a second opportunity. Doolittle had to cut into that lead in that corner. Couldn't do it. And now Kansas just going to play keep away. Good road win, it looks like. Road to the Big 12. Still goes through Lawrence. Baylor tonight goes down hard. Got to win your home games. Makailu. At the buzzer, oh, they say shot clock violation. I thought he got it off, and I think Bill Self agrees. That was a very yeah. quick shot clock violation signal from Jamie Lucky. No, in his hands. Svi said, da svidanya, which means goodbye, <laughs> but it just wasn't enough. Well, we will be in Lawrence on Saturday to see Oklahoma State, at least for us for the first time in person, this year as they are going to be taking on Kansas and tonight after some Big Ten basketball over on ESPN tune into Sports Center at night Kevin Connors and Lisa Kearney standing by all the highlights of what has been a wild night in college hoops number one goes down Duke goes down as well the NBA the NHL the NFL playoffs continue as we head towards the weekend so much more Sports Center at night after Indiana Maryland on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. I'm going to get a good look tomorrow night in my recliner of 
Iowa State going Oklahoma State. Thanks for that visual. Yep. Two terrific point guards. Monte Morris, Jawan Evans. And then we'll see them back to back on Saturday and Monday versus this Kansas team. Juan Evans, two big games against North Carolina and Connecticut and Maui. Woodard's miss ends up with Graham. And now a backcourt foul is given, and it looks like McGusty committed that foul. Now check that. Foul was called on Christian Doolittle. If you as a coach had a team that you knew was overmatched, and obviously, when Oklahoma State goes to Lawrence on yep. Saturday, yep. they're overmatched. But you could pick one position out of the five to have a really good player at to give yourself a chance. Would it always be point guard? Has to be, because he's the uh, head of the snake. He has the ball in his hands most of the time. He's got to run your team as the coach on the floor. And he's got to be calm and composed like a good quarterback in football. You see great quarterbacks all fall. So it has to be, and, and this league has got some outstanding point guards. Mason, Morris, you know, Woodard, Evans, you know, some good ones, uh, you know, jo Mano Lacan, the, the 15 point guards Bob Huggins has, you know? <laughs> That's right. Including Javon Carter, by the way, is outstanding. Landon Lucas rips away the rebounds. And now Kadeem Latin gives an unnecessary foul on Frank Mason with 9.8 to go. Hey, how about Kamal Stokes? Kansas State, who's had a really good sophomore year. Fisher and Robinson down at TCU. Keenan Evans and Thomas out of Texas Tech. Lots of good point guards. Curtain call for Frank Mason as Tyler Self will come on for the last 9.8 seconds. What a second half for Frank Mason. Ends up with 28 points, 5 of 6 from 3. One last rebound for Landon Lucas. Trailing by 9 at halftime, Kansas. And they are able to answer with a big second half and win going away by 11. So Bill Self gets win number 400 as the head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks. And they are rolling in a win against Oklahoma State on Saturday. They'll be number one when next week rolls around. Coming up next, College Basketball Live for Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe. I'm Bob Wischusen. So long from Norman.